It's always so interesting to see storytelling content on YouTube. This type of content is usually buried in a sea of clickbait content among other genres. What we'll be looking at in this documentary today is one of the platform's underrated gems, My Virtual Escape. My Virtual Escape is a 24 episode indie drama that follows the story of Isaac Calder, a troubled yet kind of pretty edgy teenager who comes across a cutting edge virtual reality headset called Eve. Eve is an immersive battle royale to where if the player makes it out on top, they get to go to Haven where they'll receive a wish. The series debuted on October 29th, 2017 on the Storyfire platform and on October 31st, 2017 on YouTube. It debuted with its first episode, Paralyzed. My Virtual Escape, or MVE as the fans like to call it, is a series produced by Jesse Ridgway, who you may actually know from his Psycho series. The Psycho series went viral, and now is Ridgway's acclaim to fame. Jesse grew up making plenty of skits with his friends, and he joined the YouTube platform on December 9th, 2006, but the Psycho series is where he really hit the jackpot. This series ran from 2013 to 2016 with it being portrayed as real life. The Ridgeway family literally had to live fake lives for pretty much all of the series run, and I gotta say, that's pretty impressive and they went to grand lengths to keep the immersion. But after the Psycho series ended, Ridgeway kind of fell into a depression with the realization that his big series was now over. It's believed that My Virtual Escape was conceptualized sometime in summer of 2016, a bit after this. My Virtual Escape kind of takes on a serious approach and it does many of its concepts well. My Virtual Escape it does a great job at foreshadowing, and there are many details that one may not find on their first watch. The series had this really cool concept where at the end of every episode, the user could choose how they would want the story to go. Kind of like those pick your own adventure books that you probably read as kids. This was done by the use of a poll on Storyfire which would appear at the end of every episode, but also on YouTube there was this whole like for this choice and then comment for this choice. And I think that it's a really cool idea because it kind of has the viewer or the audience interact with the story and they can go in many different ways. My Virtual Escape was filmed in New Jersey and the cast was compromised of Ridgeway's friends and family. Ridgeway handled directing, editing, story, and writing while also playing the title character Isaac Calder. The show was filmed by Jeff Saxton and the soundtrack was composed and sang by Juliet Riley. Ridgeway also had some input in this. The Devil Inside is a sister series to My Virtual Escape and has Isaac thrown into the role as the main character for its first season. The series involves Jesse Ridgway acting as himself, finding himself within an issue where he constantly snaps into his characters. Isaac makes his first debut here and takes over Jesse for the remainder of this season. This directly ties into My Virtual Escape where a scene in the episode Double Cross shows Isaac disappearing through a mirror and the events of the first season of The Devil Inside begin. But don't worry, he's back by the end of the episode. My Virtual Escape, to me, just shows how much an indie series can really be. The budget for this show was roughly $96,000, and for what they could manage, it was seriously impressive. But hey, how about we sit down with the man himself and ask some questions and hopefully we'll learn more about the show's development. Here we go. When did the idea of My Virtual Escape come to fruition? My Virtual Escape came to me after I finished a previous massive series called the Psycho <laughs> yeah. Series. Um, it was during 2016, uh, summer 2016. I remember thinking of what the next big series was. And uh, I remember thinking, okay, my previous series was a hit because it was had gaming as a backdrop. What's another series that can have gaming as a backdrop that feels more modern uh, and something that could speak to generations in the future? And virtual reality became uh, the main topic on my mind. 
I heard that you like fell into like a depression of sort after Psycho. Is that correct? Yeah, it it actually wasn't real. Um, I just figured with such a big part of my life being over that it would make sense if my character, Jesse Ridgeway, would go into a depression after that. Um, but I'm very versatile and it was like, I, I thought of a way that I could bring back reality to the channel, which was acting like a washed up YouTuber. I thought that hadn't really been done before. And I was like, let's, let's see me become depressed. And then also segue it into a brand new produced series, which was MVE or My Virtual Escape. Ah, all right. Did you plan for MVE to go any differently? So My Virtual Escape went through a multitude of different changes over the years, just like Psycho Series or anything that uh, is produced. Uh, there's rewrites on the day of, there's rewrites months prior, there's character changes. Uh, you know, you always got to be open and adaptable when storytelling there. The My Virtual Escape was almost sold to Verizon uh, for a few million dollars. That was going to be a much tighter series, like potentially like 10 episodes that um, had a larger budget behind it, which would have changed production. Since I was shooting everything myself uh, in South Jersey with my family and stuff, a lot of the things that I wrote were with the intention that I would be producing them in a low budget um, capacity. So like if I knew I was getting more money, I would the series would be completely different. I also think of the medium as well. A lot of the content was potentially going to go on YouTube so I'm having to curb the uh, swearing potentially, or the gore, or the guns, um, and have to tailor different things to the platform, so that way it could be clickbaity. Uh, people would actually click on the thumbnail, or the title. There's a lot of things that go into the crafting of the uh, kind of the optics of the content just to get attention to it. However, uh, there ended up being a change where I released the series to Storyfire on my platform. So that way I could creatively do whatever I wanted and it wasn't so much about money or clickbait, it was just about the storytelling. I have I have a friend and he couldn't get over the fact that, you know, the little girl was Solomon. He yeah, couldn't get that's over so that. my favorite twist. He could again, great series. Uh Thanks. was there any were were there any hardships or how was it like playing Isaac? Um, hardship wise, I mean, just, just speaking of playing Isaac, the character, it's, you know, I, I definitely would prefer, uh, I like telling darker stories. I can't say that I enjoy playing a depressed character. Um, it definitely takes its mental toll. Also, I'm not only just playing as the character, but I'm writing for the character as well. So it becomes, uh, you're living and breathing in that world for so long it ends up rubbing off on you mentally. Um, and then there's also a lot of physicality to Isaac's character. You know, he's fighting in VR, doing some crazy stunts and things. And, you know, it's definitely challenging to uh, be completely immersed in that world. You know, he, he lost his little sister and um, he's uh, trying to find himself. He's trying to he's trying to grow up, really, and uh, figure himself out in the world and uh, playing that. You know, I went through my own journey as well. From hardships from a production standpoint, um, it's always a pain in the ass managing people's schedules. Uh, you know, having that was a pretty large cast, I think, of like maybe close to 30 people total. Um, it's very hard. And a lot of people had day jobs. So we're trying to schedule shoots, shooting like 12, 14 hour days, trying to make sure we can block out time for each person and that we have a larger group scene trying to pick a day while also maintaining a schedule of releasing in an episode a week. So the hardest thing was me as the showrunner, I'm writing a 30 page script on Monday or say Sunday, Monday, I'm writing a 30 page script. Um, and then for four more days, five more days, we're shooting 12, 14 hour days. I'm, I'm managing it all aspects while starring in the thing. And then while also uh, any scenes that I'm not in, I'm shooting, I'm shooting the cam, I'm, I'm filming them. Um, and then, you know, I have one day to compile the, say, 20 hours of footage and cut that into a cohesive, entertaining episode. And then I release it, publish it, 
tally up the votes and then the next day I'm writing a 30 page script for the next episode and we ran that for you know what I think was right around maybe nine months so it was uh pretty pretty rigorous definitely took its toll health wise you know it's very different from a a traditional production where you have a team of say 50 people everyone's doing a different task I'm doing literally everything myself um with the help of like family and friends so uh the and the uh, intensive schedule to keep up with audiences' demands. The audience is very, very demanding. Uh, they want stuff instantly this day and age. So, you know, trying to be respectful to the audience's attention um, while also not, you know, completely sacrificing all health for, for the series. Yeah, it seems really tough. It seems like a lot to manage. It, it is a lot. It's, uh, and, you know, it, it it definitely was enjoyable throughout just because we knew what we were doing was telling this grand story. Um, and it was fun to, to kind of go through that journey, but you know, I'd be lying if it wasn't more misery than that. <laughs> <laughs> There's this one part uh, in the episode, Little Gangbanger, that whole monologue that you gave when Isaac was with Rebecca, it was really mm-hmm. good and it actually pulled some heartstrings in with the whole like montage of Isaac and Eve. Yeah, yeah, that was powerful. What is it? I've heard, I think I heard you said it in the behind the scenes, but I don't know if it was real or not. But did you like get so into the carriage that you actually thought that you had a little sister? Yeah, it definitely happens, you know, um, and I think it happens more intimately than traditional productions, mainly because we're shooting so much in real time and a lot of it is. Uh, not so much MVE, but even in the devil inside, it got pretty dark or Sega series where these are all my actual family members. You know, I am playing this character day in, day out. Whereas, you know, say a movie, they're maybe shooting for two months and then that's it for the character or a TV show. They're in the character's skin for a couple months for shooting the season. And then that's it for the rest of the year. They can go lift their life, whatever. For, for a YouTube show, um, you know, we're living and breathing it for extended periods of time. So, you know, say with Psycho Series where I shot my dad or in MVE where I lost my little sister and I'm, I'm having to keep reinforcing this narrative in my head, um, it's definitely very easy to get immersed into it and think, oh my God, my sister's actually dead. Uh, I'm pretty sad and, and it definitely speaks to just how humans are in everyday life. Uh, you know, Dom yourself or Jesse Ridgway is just a character uh, that we've reinforced these narratives and habits in our head that make us who we are. But who we actually are is a blank slate. It's just whatever we and other people tell us we are. So, you know, I think there's definitely been a lot of learning lessons over the years just by playing different characters is that you know, we have the versatility to be whoever we want. And uh, if you tell yourself that you lost your little sister, you know, and, and you're to blame for that, you keep telling yourself that for a long time, you believe it. It's real. Kind of, It kind of hit a bit because I actually have, how old was Eve in the series? Uh, I, I'd imagine she was like, you know, four to four to six years old. Uh, at first, I thought she was like around like six, seven, eight, because I actually have a little sis, sister around that age, so I kind of hated it. She could be six, seven, eight. You know, it's um, we purposely didn't put too much emphasis on on just that she was younger. She st- she was still such an innocent uh, person, you know. Yeah. Uh. I know that the Devil Inside. I heard that the Devil Inside series wouldn't have happened if the Psycho documentary was sold earlier. How would your YouTube channel be if things went different? So yeah, originally uh, because of the documentary getting delayed to come out, uh, it kind of pushed everything back. I, I wanted to come out with behind the scenes for Psycho series and. Uh, that delay meant I couldn't release the BTS, which meant I couldn't move on to the next big series. So MV kept getting pushed back. And then my agent and manager at the time, uh, they were both advocating. They're like, yo, don't do this on YouTube. Do not make this. We can sell it. We can sell it as a show. So they started pitching and stuff. So I, I kind of lost control of my own production and, and channel because I'm waiting for the kind of traditional bodies to make their moves. So, um, 
I think had I was able to come out with MVE sooner, uh, I think it would have definitely been a lot better. I think there would have been a lot more views, a lot more people would have got to see what we could do uh, after Psycho. Um, unfortunately, but I, I'm not too mad because what we got with the devil inside was really special. A lot of people really loved the, you know, watching Isaac exist in Jesse Ridgway's world and the mirrors and the wizard and all this crazy stuff that, you know, I think, uh, I think it was a happy accident that uh, it got pushed back. One little quick thing, it's, it's, it's kind of off topic. Mm. Could you snap your fingers for me? Hell no. Hell no? Oh, what if I went to go grab a mirror? Ah, it's, too power, it's too powerful. It's too what powerful. if I went to go grab a mirror? <laughs> it's too dangerous. Too, da too dangerous? Yeah, the whole snap, snap of fingers thing was just for snap and, or, <laughs> sorry, sync, sync and audio <laughs> to make sure that, that, that the recordings go well. But I kind of, oh, of course. Yeah, right. I, I kind of right. wanted to see what I can also <laughs> do. Because again, like, right, yeah. Right. But when Isaac was thrown, when he was taken out the bathtub by your mom, mm -hmm. and like, you know, she was trying to make sure he was okay and everything. And Isaac goes, and Isaac goes, like, go away. Like, you of all people care. I thought that was like foreshadowing kind of married too. Because how she never uh, cared, so 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 that was intentional. I noticed there was one part in this family intervention where Isaac was speaking to your dad or Jeff, and he was like, he was, he was starting to kind of break down. He was like, "You don't know what I've been through," like, and I thought that was kind of foreshadowing like what happens in MVE, you know, Eve, and it's pretty. It was really well right. done. And thank you, man. Yeah, it, it's it, that's um. It was, it's challenging. It's challenging to drop foreshadows at Easter eggs and things so early on. Um, and then you don't see them come to fruition for years and years down the road. It's a very patient process for storytelling to where I think, I think a lot of it sometimes is lost on the audience. Some of the smarter uh, viewers, the, the, one that, the ones that take a deeper look at the channel, um, I think it can start to spot it and things. But sometimes people get frustrated. They think, you know, oh, that it's not going anywhere. That I, that didn't make sense at the time. But it's only in you know retrospective viewing, or you know, and if nothing's happened yet, wait two three years, and you might see something come up again, and you're like, oh shit! Just because I understand the nature of digital, where none of this shit is going anywhere, um, and if I want to. You know, me making something 20 years from now can have direct tie back to something that happened in my virtual escape and, you know, with, with Devil Inside and the mirror system and these characters and stuff where it's like, as long as I'm still breathing, there there's always going to be some tether or connection to all these stories, no matter what medium I'm, I'm exploring. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that was very much a direct um, foreshadow and it didn't have relevance at the time, but only... You know, after MVE, you see it, you go back, you're like, oh, my God, like Isaac, who we who we weren't even fully sure who Isaac is, is talking to whom he perceives as somebody that looks like Joseph, uh, saying like, you know, he's talking to Jeff Ridge. He's like, you don't know the pain that I felt or like, you don't know what I've been through, all this stuff. But like Joseph understands, but Jeff Ridgeway doesn't understand. And it's just this weird, weird conflict. Um but yeah, I mean, it's a super, that was still one of my favorite videos that we've shot. Everyone's acting in the family intervention was, uh, was an excellent. Is he aware that they look similar, that they look like, you know, who they're meant to be in MVE? Like, say if you looked at Larry, would he think it's Abraham mm -hmm. or like, like, does he think that and he just, just doesn't say it? I, to me, I've always viewed it as, uh, like I get deja vu a lot. I, I have very weird, uh, weird experiences in my life that, you know, I, I can't say are coincidental, but um, even if I was to say dream somebody uh, and then see them in real life, I'm never instantly able to recognize that person from a dream. It, it feels to me more like there's just a weird feeling. And that's what I think Isaac has when he sees these people. It's like, I can't, you seem familiar. I can't fully place it. And I think it's because he he's using a different brain. He's in a different world. And uh, 
his subconscious, just like when you're in a dream state, is maybe the thing that's more so controlling him. So it's not as, uh, you're not as conscious about who you were and who you are in the previous life. You know, it's like if we all did live a previous life uh, different from the one that we're in right now, we don't remember it consciously, but uh, subconsciously, maybe when we were children, we had visceral nightmares and memories and things that maybe, uh, maybe loosely, if we ran into somebody from a past life, we might have a feeling, but it's too hard to pinpoint. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I definitely get it. It was just always something I was pondering in the series, because there, there seemed like little implications that made it seem like Isaac knew at least something. But I think yeah. he was, wasn't he under like control or something of like the devil because of what happened in Double Cross, right? Exactly, and the devil, the the devil has his hands in, in every single thing, in the, any anything that is shown on video, the devil has his hands in. Uh, this kind of this kind of rubs back to mirrors. Uh, I know in Rule Nineteen, mm -hmm. there's there's like you know, kind of something similar to what you do nowadays with like mirrors. Was that mm -hmm. intentional in any way, or was that just an idea that you had in Rule 19, and later on you went back to it and you decided to expand more upon it, or was it just always connected like that? Um, it's you're referencing better off a, a clone. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, where real Jesse's trapped in the mirror. Yeah, like there was like a mirror bit in Rule 19, but it was like the exact same setup. Yeah, at the time, the intention of that scene was just to more so show clone number one's losing his mind, uh, feeling guilty for uh, kind of having a part in trapping real Jesse Ridgeway and using him for more clones. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't as literal um, as real Jesse's trapped in the mirror and needs help. However, you know, I, I would even even though the devil inside has explored a more literal meaning of somebody being trapped in a mirror, I also don't think it's that literal. I don't, you know, I, although we're seeing it depicted with the mirrors and stuff, you know, I think we've also seen that uh, it's just symbolic for Jesse Ridgway's mind and that the mirror system is just a on-camera ploy, a plot device. I think, as we've seen with snapping, character changes can happen at any point in any time under any circumstances just cause because it's all a mental game uh, I, I'm trying I'm trying to remember something so uh, excuse me for that hmm I'm trying to remember what but but yeah to, to while you're thinking of that um, with the mirror stuff it back then uh the mirror i was always fascinated with mirrors uh, i i think they're really cool i'm like it's pretty crazy we look at this like you know glass that reflects imagery and stuff and uh i always uh, as a kid I, I used to imagine going through it um to another world because i'd see uh, other you know i'd see what looks to be me in the mirror but maybe it's not exactly me it's just a, it's just an image of me and i imagine like what if it changed and things or what if you could go through and it was another world so the idea has definitely always been there um and then it's just kind of organically evolved from there as a cool uh plot device do you think at any point i know we're in middle are, are like where exactly you don't have to obviously say it but where are we in season four of the devil inside right now like do you think that we're reaching a climax soon or are we reaching something big or like season four are we in season four of what of the devil inside you don't know no idea what you're referring to do you <laughs> do you think that there's a possibility that by the end of this series we'll see real Jesse again? Who's not? I'm, are you saying I'm not real Jesse? Man, <laughs> are you, you think? Are you talking to a character right now? Are you the real Jesse, or are you? Would you ever even know? See, that's like the hard thing. I don't know if you. And, and with the hat on, does the hat mean anything? I don't I know. You know that the community like shortens Jesse Tyler to Tyler, right? Are you aware of that? I assume you. Who the fuck? What are you talking about? My middle name? Hey, you scrolled to Reddit, right? I assume so. What Reddit? 
<laughs> the fuck is Reddit? Man, ah, I'm I'm having I'm having a good time. I only use I only use Twitter, bro. You don't use Discord or any of that. No, I don't use Discord. All right, I know. Not too familiar with Reddit. I know. I know that you definitely have. Uh, yeah, you, you definitely have a side of the community that likes to really speculate and analyze your content. And like you know, like just with any video comes out, there's always a lot of like. I know, I know this one dude. Whenever there's any like mention or like any like, if you like, if there's like a meteor scene in like a video, they'll chalk it up and like you know they'll like remember that, and they'll like remember it for like later on. And there's like this like really cool, like there's like this Discord and MJN server I'm part I'm, I'm part of that really analyzes your content, but it's like. I, I I know I know this one dude. He watched MVE at eighty five times and he's still going. What the nah? No, I'm serious, dude. I'm serious. What? I'm serious. Like, dude, like, <laughs> you know, like, like, there are a lot of people out there who like to really analyze your content. He, I mean, he he might catch something on the eighty sixth time. There it's has to, there has to be stuff there that we haven't seen yet. I've I've watched it a handful of times because it's been a few years now. I'll watch it and be like, "Oh shit!" I'll 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 catch something the the fucking sixth time around. Series, Isaac was in Abraham's house and he grabs a fire poker and he's like, "I can kill somebody with this." And then he connects mm -hmm. the dots and in the end he ends up killing Abraham with the fire poker. Oh, no. Did, was that also intentional? Okay. 100 percent yeah there's a lot of fire poker uh foreshadowing there's foreshadowing with the fire poker in um devil inside as well uh you know i always envisioned that being the the kill shot weapon uh for him you know and then there's definitely a lot of symbolism behind you know isaac uh blaming jesus of all people or and then just mutilating him with the fire poker as arachnid watch at the end of the heist um you know i don't i don't want to i don't want to give away too many yeah yeah the, i don't want i don't want to do that it's, i like also thinking yeah, about definitely. it i like also thinking about yeah. it yeah uh any changes to isaac's character through the development of my virtual escape or the devil inside season one like was he meant to be different any name changes any personality traits that were altered anything like that yeah, so I mean, Isaac and the Devil Inside versus Isaac and MBE, they're they're definitely s similar but different. You know, it's like I was talking before. You know, Isaac in Jesse Ridgeway's world is more functioning from a subconscious basis, uh, in in almost like a, a fugue state. Uh, he's a prisoner in this world by manipulation of the devil. Um, so there, there's definitely a difference in some character uh traits but um he's also a bit more unruly you know he he i think he is aware of the the world that he's in and that he can do whatever the fuck he wants um but he's also aware that the world he's in isn't true so the that makes him very depressed you know he's in a fake world with people that he's no idea so like he has some fun times within that but then it's also like what the fuck is the point of this? Why am I in this bullshit? How do I get out? He tried um, to get out in my only escape. He said, maybe this will make me go back. Yeah, okay, and, and I think it was, that's why it came at a critical time where, you know, Isaac gets thrusted out of his world and then entered into here where Isaac in MVE at the point uh, was very depressed and didn't want to be where he was. And then all of a sudden he gets thrust somewhere else that maybe is exciting for a bit, but it just feels like another layer of VR at that point. Um, and he wants to get out. He's depressed wherever he goes. So I think, uh, you know, there is a huge character change within Isaac and the Devil Inside. Um, and then the Isaac that we see in MBE is a bit more uh, structured. And granted, he is a, he's a lot more scripted as well. So, you know, there wasn't as much improv and it might have felt harder to relate to Isaac at first in MVE, um, just given that, uh, you know, we that was a separate story to tell and he, um, you know, we're doing a lot of world building and, and we had to explore the actual true character arc 
um, different from the devil inside. So it's definitely two sides of the same Isaac coin, uh, but there's, there's clear differences between the two. Was the connection to the devil inside always a part of the series or was it a last minute decision? So connection to devil inside, once I learned that MVE was not going to be purchased by Verizon, uh, there is a bunch of changes there as well as um, while we were making the devil inside, I mean, obviously it was conscious. I knew, I, I thought it'd be really cool of an idea if we got exposed to a character um, and I think I did this a few other times as well. Um, I can't think off the top of my head, but where we introduce a character or something that really has no relevance whatsoever. Um, and they're in this world. Um, I almost just spoiled something. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta watch myself. Uh, I take um, your time, man. Go. Yeah, you're all right. Um, but but yeah, it was it was consciously dis- decided. I think it was around the time of the Christmas series. Uh, there we were starting to explore the snapping stuff loosely, as well as the uh, the collab series. There is a bit of like snapping. Um, I mean, the snapping's been pretty consistently throughout a bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, it was 2016 where I was like, all right, if we can't do MVE yet. Uh, we're doing this devil inside shit, and then uh, I, I already have an idea of where it'll where it'll link in MVE. I wasn't a hundred percent on like what episode it's gonna link in an MVE because the you know I had a, a holy Bible for my virtual escape writing it, which is a very loose guide with plot points in each episode. But I I, I didn't have all th- each you know thirty times twenty four episodes, thirty page scripts times twenty four. I didn't have them all written. That was going to be in real time. So I wasn't sure where exactly to plug that scene in or where Isaac gets ported the devil inside, but I knew roughly when what season it had to happen. And it was when shit hits the fan, you know, why not, right? Throw Always throw the main character into fucking hell. And that's where you'll get the most entertaining shit and uh, the more compelling arc. So while in crucifixion, when shit's hitting the fan, why not just fucking thrust him out of his world too any particular reason why you chose religion to be a major theme am i am i allowed to ask that it kind of wrote itself it was like if we're gonna build a world a virtual world uh that's that's creation you know that's that's genesis that's that's like uh how this world was created and and the people on it and you know i'm not religious by any means but i thought that's a really interesting backdrop and we could pull character names and have a lot of symbolism and an overlap between the Bible. It's like this, uh, you know, writing the Bible of MVE is writing about, you know, the beginnings of a digital virtual world uh, that I thought was cool. And you have the overlord versus God and all these different things that, that blend themselves together. And I think, I think in our real lives now, as we dip further into the metaverse and we see all this virtual reality shit and it's going to get more poignant, we're going to be spending actual time in VR. I think as humans, the human race, uh, we are playing God in a lot of different ways. And uh, I, I think MVE has a lot of uh, foreshadowing to maybe where we're heading uh, as a society. What's one regret, or, or sorry, what's one regret you ha- you wish you could change about the series? Like something you could change? Um, I, I do wish, I wish it made money. I know, I know that was, it was a financial failure by, by all means. Um, I, I definitely, it was one of, I love MVE. So like I, I don't like focusing on the the financial side, but when people look at my content uh, since my virtual escape and wonder where's the big produced series, where's the next MVE, uh, it's not financially sustainable, um, and nor does it get rewarded on the platform. Uh, so that's why my main focus has been Storyfire. Until we have a platform that actually rewards storytellers and creators and things like MVE, I don't feel comfortable of wasting time and energy on something that will get punished by the platform and I'll lose $80,000, you know? So um, the regret would be, I wish there was a way to make it financially viable. I, I, I can't say I would have done anything differently then. 
So I, I don't know if I'd say fully it's a regret. It was just a wish. Um, but, um, you know, maybe you've made it a YouTube original. Maybe that would have been it. But we pitched them and they didn't want to pick up the series. They they said uh, they they were full, that they, they didn't have room for it on their slate. Um, but... Yeah, as far as the actual production goes, I mean, it was uh, I love I love the series. There's nothing really I would change. Um, I, I I made it the way I wanted to make it, and in my eyes, it was perfect. And uh, the way the, how quickly we produced that in nine months and the experiences we all had, I think, was pretty unforgettable. I personally think your content should be seen by a lot more people. Because, you know, mm -hmm. there's, like, so much that goes into it. But then it just gets overshadowed by, like, you know, clickbait content. And I don't really think that's fair. But that's also why, you know, you're doing story fire, you know? It's like... Yep. And you're like... Uh, they, they say restriction breeds creativity, which I wholeheartedly agree. Like, if YouTube was perfect, uh, story fire would have no opportunity. Um, but because it, is, it because it is very flawed... Uh, you know, I think people think, oh, YouTube's so big that it can't fail. YouTube didn't exist 20 years ago, and it won't 20 years from now. And if it does, it's going to be very different. It might not. It, everything that at the top always gets thrown off the throne. It will not be the king always. So uh, I think no better thing to disrupt it than than something like Story Fire. It's just... It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long road, um, but you know this thing this platform needs to exist and there needs to be more than just one. You know, uh, there we got a couple billion people on YouTube, got a lot of people that aspire to be creators. There's only one fucking game in town. There needs to be twenty. That that's true. It's like how there's competitors for like Facebook, for example. Like you know, there's always gonna be a competitor, and I'm I think Storyfire has. A lot of potential and i know you did a marketing push last year right mm -hmm. i'm curious to see how you guys are gonna do the second marketing push like i like I, I know it's like over the last like month you guys just come back like full force like mm -hmm. it's like you're ready to hit the ground running yeah yeah and i'm curious to see where that goes and i wish you and brian and the rest of the luck Thanks, man. Uh, am I am I allowed to ask about deck chair? You can ask. Uh, I'm not gonna get an answer though. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I mean, you can always shoot your shot. You know. I don't, <laughs> Are you deck chair? Am I am I deck chair? Are you deck chair? What do you think, man? I mean. Like honestly, honestly, what do you think I am, deck chair? I'm gonna be straight up with you, Jesse. I think that you are deck chair or deck chair. You think I am? And I think you are deck chair. Yeah. So you think it's some elaborate McJuggernuggets narrative shit? I mean, you gotta think, dude. I've been I've been literally raised on this content since I was in you know grade school. You know. Is 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 potentially? I'm curious to hear your reasoning why. While also understanding that maybe you think it's narrative because there's a fear of, God forbid, you buy into this one thing for the 18th time and then you're duped. I think I think it's just like the way I see it set up. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. we don't know who, 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 deck, who Deck Chair is. Right. We don't know who he is. We haven't seen him. We know nothing about him and the first time that we really like hear mention of him is you know in like you know the videos that's kind of like my reasoning i could obviously be wrong but well technically you first see the deck chair name in the nft auction which is outside it's t that takes place outside of video would you consider this would you consider those things that you post on twitter and you know your videos like separate like universe type thing that's a good point because we've seen me be in character on Twitter and other yeah, socials. Yeah, there's either so. psycho. Right, right. I I always ponder this stuff, you know. <laughs> it's like it's like you're giving me information, <laughs> and now I'm just pondering it in my head. But that's like the. Yeah, I mean, you get it. You're getting an inside look here, so 
Again, yeah. I, I'm 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 really really appreciative of it. No, I'm I'm ha- I'm, ha- I'm, ha- I'm having lots of fun. I like rewarding somebody who not only yeah I appreciate the, the support and everything, but I like rewarding somebody who actually puts himself out there and tries. You know, you 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 went out on a limb and asked. And what's funny is if you say posted in whatever this Reddit thing is called, um, or you know all this other shit, and we're like. I think I'm gonna see if Jesse's down to do an interview. I bet you most people would be like, no, that probably won't happen. You'll never get, the, it'll be all negative shit. But you said, fuck all, I'm gonna ask anyway. And you immediately got a response. So it's I, like, I, 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 you you deserve to get the conversation with me because you fucking, you, you sent it. I know, man. And like, you know, I thought if I'm doing an, if I'm doing an interview, um, I, if I'm doing a documentary on my virtual escape, I gotta get the man himself, you know? Like, I, like that's, like, that was, like, my whole, like, plan, like, trying to go into it, and I'm so, I'm so grateful to be working with you on this in some way. Like, that's oh, yeah. always been, like, a little, like, dream of mine, dude. Like, I hope if things go well, I hope sometime in the future I can work with you again. Like, dude, I, you never know. I I would love I would love to help you at Rigid Studios. Trust me, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, I've always wanted to see how things are made. You know, I I it's it's something I'm really passionate about. I'm sorry if this sounds forced or anything like that, but I just always, you know, I would like I hope if things go well, I hope I can. There's like a potential chance where we we can work together in the future again. Life is long, man. Uh, you never know. Yeah, I mean. Any any uh, final questions? I gotta bounce like very soon. All right, uh, we're gonna. I have two questions. Well, I I, I have okay. more, uh, but, but I got two more. Will Will okay. we ever get an explanation to that cryptic tweet about Psycho Kid in the Woods? What What tweet? You know the one where it it looks like it was taken sometime during the police country, but he's in the woods. Psycho Kid is, and it was. I, trying to remember but it said someday you know we'll see him again mm-hmm. yeah it said he will be redeemed he will be redeemed okay yeah I mean uh, we, we got kind of a a follow up with the graphic novel it, you know it it was its own medium its own story definitely wasn't like the direct continuation of Psycho series because it got very fictional with the superhero stuff but um to me, the stories are still ongoing, always. Uh, so, you know, Psycho Kid, whether it's through the mirror or not, whether we have access to it or not, is still living out his life and his story. So, you know, it, it, I'd imagine he's still in Switzerland. And uh, I think at that point in time, uh, posting that, probably feeling nostalgic about the character, the story, wondering, hey, what's he up to? And it was like, we got to see a glimpse, like a quick little peek through the through the mirror and that's that's where he's at looks like he's out in the fucking wilderness doing some weird ass shit i don't even know (laughs) eating fucking baby food Um, (laughs) but but yeah i mean it's something that i've always i I think about from time to time uh same with like i'm wondering what the fuck isaac's up to or these other characters or you know uh exploring different imaginary realms uh but yeah i mean would will his will we ever see Psycho Kid again? Like like the actual Psycho Kid from that uh, specific story, the main, universe. the main universe. It's possible, you know. Will we see it explored in alternate universes or in different formats? You never know. Really, like uh, a lot of my creative decisions are founded on just like what gets me excited what I think the audience gets excited about, what YouTube will like. Um, and if the, all of those things com- converge and it's all of them, then that's usually what I make. So, um, you know, I'm, you never know what's going to happen. I think that's the beauty of the last couple years of content. People have no fucking clue what's going on. They have no idea what's happening. And some people are like, well, it's not... A- it's by design. There's gonna be, you're gonna get pieces, always. I, yeah. It's up to the viewer. Yeah. It's up to the viewer. I'm not spoon feeding shit. It's up to the viewer to to look at all the pieces, 
and start try pushing them together. Um, and 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 Psycho Kid's just one piece. Man, all right. Million dollar, <laughs> million dollar question, million dollar question, Mister Ridgeway. All right, I don't know if you can answer it or not. Any plans for a My Virtual Escape sequel? I know I've heard about this. I know mm-hmm. I remember hearing that you were trying to pitch MV2 to a streaming service from Netflix. I know that mm-hmm. I know that was a few months ago, but yeah. Do you pl- so, do you plan yeah. to start that back up eventually, or do you think it's just gonna? <laughs> I, do you think it's just gonna just not happen? I know there was another series, Monotone. I think you were gonna do right. That was yeah. That was two, like 2013. Very old. Um, I, I've harvested some things from Monotone and, and repurposed them for other series. So I, I kind of feel like I've I've done that Monotone in a way because I've gotten some crazy twists and stole from from my own previous shit. Um, I don't know. I I love MVE. I love the the universe. I love the backdrop. I think you can tell a lot of stories within VR. I was pitching Netflix. I was pitching. I was just pitching a series to whoever would be interested. Um, and when I say pitching, my manager, I thought was hopefully going to be doing that. Unfortunately, over the last year, he ain't been doing much. He hasn't been doing much. Work. No, and that's what's hard, you know. I've had I've had different representation behind the scenes over the years, and it seems like if my views aren't a hundred million views a month, uh, the representation is not. They're not interested in pitching me. Uh, where it's it's become even uh, in the managerial sense, it's it's about the numbers, and they'd rather go with bankable numbers. And then somebody who's talented or has, cre- you know, great creativity or whatever. So uh, that's been unfortunate. I have a really beautiful trailer cut of my virtual escape that's never been seen before. I teased it a little bit on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, I remember that. Um, that, you know, I've just been sitting on and it's been the pitch trailer uh, to get it picked up. Uh, unfortunately, I have you need access to uh, Netflix and all that. You need connections. And my my main connection is not pitching me. He's, he's older. He doesn't feel like doing anything. Um, and to be honest, he pissed me off because he didn't even fully watch the My Virtual Escape series. Man, yeah, so, he's. <laughs> I hope it. I, so that, yeah, dude. I hope it gets. I hope it gets picked up. Or I hope it gets started up sometime. Yeah. Soon. So as so, so as an artist, you know, that's always the kind of the biggest insult is like you didn't even watch the work. Um, and so uh, it was being forced. So that kind of became backburnered. Obviously, I would still love to see MVE on the big screen and being able to see uh, different plots and, and arcs explored. Um, but uh, unfortunately, until I get some actual good representation, uh, that can't happen. However, uh, it's something, uh, one thing I learned uh, within all this when you think things are dead they never are whereas like i came up with the ursula series when i was a freshman in high school like yeah that was I came a long up with time ago that was a very long time ago that was like 2000 2006 2007 um and then i little did i know i end up making that series in 2016 almost 10 years later damn do you have yeah did you ever do you like did you ever write any material for mv2 like a- um a couple couple small bits uh nothing crazy uh and i and i always have had arcs in my head prequel sequel retelling um completely different characters uh you know that's that's all definitely been in my mind um but, you know, I think for me also to get excited about an MVE too, when you tell a story, it's like you kind of got it out of your system. Um, it would have to be a very new story so no Isaac? for MVE No too. Isaac? If there was an Isaac, it, it'd be lo- it, he'd show up in Cameo. Um, or, or if it was a sequel series, the story would have to be completely different, like a different driver for Isaac. 
and, uh, and a different, uh, a diff fully, fully different arc. Man, well, I hope, I hope that eventually that comes to fruition one day. Because trust me, dude. Yeah, I mean, I love it. It was, thanks, man. It was inspiring, uh, just with Squid Game that uh, the creator of the show was pitching Squid Game for fucking ten years. It could always happen. It could always happen. You never know. And you know, I'm I don't plan on stopping what I'm doing anytime soon. So you know, all these ideas they're always getting kicked around in here. And then uh, you never know. You get into talking with somebody, and they're like, "Hey, you got any ideas?" And I was like, "Well, I had this one like when I was younger about this, this." And then somebody's like, "Yo, that's fucking good. We should make that." Hold on, hold on, like, to it, man. Somebody's yep, gonna take always. it. Somebody's gonna gonna take it eventually. I don't know when. But I think hopefully we'll see MV too one day. And 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 I've always had this thought, and it's pretty it's it's super interesting because um, I remember when when my channel started blowing up, I was like, oh whoa, this is crazy, and it feels feels very isolated to a point in time. But now you know, five years later, uh, since like end of Psycho series, and I've kind of been in the spotlight for a bit now. I'm having a lot of fans that are on their own come up. You know, I've seen fans all of a sudden hit a million plus subscribers. I've seen fans go on to, you know, get some six figure paying jobs. I've seen, I've seen a lot of fans start entering college, uh, to go into film school or, you know, going, uh, going to pursue film. And it could be one of those things where somebody that I touched uh, when they were younger all of a sudden is able to break through and, and break into the industry or whatever. And a whole, who knows, all of a sudden I get an email saying, Hey, Jess, can, can we make this? It's somebody that was inspired, grew up watching me and, and, and hits me up when I'm fucking like 40 years old doing, being like, yo man, can we do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've definitely inspired me a lot and you've definitely, made me very passionate like I'll, f I'll film skits with my friends sometimes dude and i'll just have fun i'm always holding the camera I'm, I, I always try and get specific camera shots like how you doing your videos and it you, you've definitely inspired me and made me really passionate about you know filmmaking you know how, how it's done you know your channel and i just want you to know that, like, again, it, like, it means a lot, and again, it's still crazy that I'm here talk talking to you after all these years, dude, and, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, and, you know, like, I, like, I'll, I'll, I'll always, I'll watch your content, I'll always analyze it, I'll even, you know, I'll even, I'll even do up, like, you know, I'll, I'll even, like, do up drawings, I think I, I think I showed you, did you ever mm -hmm. see, Okay, so my Twitter name is Dplux. Have you ever heard of that name? Yeah. You've heard of it? Yeah, yeah. I recognize that. All right. So have you seen... I'll make MVE fan art sometimes. I kind of, like, draw... I'll redraw scenes, like, an anime, like, you know... Yeah. I might have seen that. Yeah. I sent you in, like, one of your... There was something about MVE. But, uh... Right. It was a manga, which is, like, a Japanese comic book, and I was... Yeah. yeah, yeah, I saw that. It was pretty good. Yeah, and I, I'll like you know I'll do that, and you know I'll make a lot of content for like you know MVE. I'll like I'll I'll like do, I'll do a lot of artwork for it, and you know I put a lot of, and it, it's always so hard trying to convert Isaac into like you know two D, two D character. Like I had some struggle with that. There was this one specific art style that I did. Uh, you wouldn't know what it is, but it's kill a kill. I, that was the whole basis of the art style for the MVE anime manga drawings, and I plan to continue that. But the thing with the with the manga is that I'm really trying to stick closely to your original vision. Like I'm being very careful with what I do, you know, just trying to keep everything right. intact and. Um, I gotta bounce, man. All right, man. It was really, it was really nice seeing you. And, you know, it was, it was nice. Likewise, seeing you. bro.
Um, and yeah, you know what? Until I uh, were you about the fun times, man? I was. I was about to, dude. I was about to. You know, I'm glad. I'm glad you did this to me. I hope that eventually, sometime in the future, you know, we can probably do something again. I'm. A, I'm, a, I'm yeah. always available, man. I'll, and, and you. You have a YouTube channel, or? I originally did. 4,000 subscribers, but actually, I actually got YouTube themselves. They actually, like, you know, took it down for no reason, but they have a new one. Oh. And, you know, I just post little things from there from time to time. But, you know, I will... Well, well look, man, it's it's going to be a little, you know, we're, we're still mid-housekeeping uh, with Storyfire. So if you want to, if you wanted to post this, I'm, I'm fine with it. If you wanted to click B and put it on YouTube, just until we get Storyfire going more and we get we can you know talk about video on there but yeah if you want to post youtube i'm totally fine with it man. yeah i hope that there's like a time in the future where i could definitely you know work with you on something like rigid studios you know mm -hmm. something of any kind like you know sometime in the future i'm obviously 17 right now so i can't really do anything but you know if, right, if right. you have any an extra guy or somebody to help just you know just always hit me up Rochester's not far, man. It's really not far, you know? All right, Dom. I'll catch you later, bro. Right, fun times? I'll give you a little... Fun time! Fun time. Have, good shit, have a good one, man. Keep it rigid. Stay lit, bro. Hey, keep it rigid. Peace. Peace.